My name is Ravi Kumar, Assistant Professor, Department of Mechanical Engineering, SIV Institute of Technology, Bangalore. So today I am here to explain the uh, module 3 in Applied Thermodynamics that is Vapor Power Cycle. Okay. So Vapor Power Cycles are external combustion systems in which the working fluid is alternatively vaporized and condensed. Here the water or a steam is, is easily available, it is economical and it is chemical stable. Okay, so hence it is a, it is commonly used working fluid in the vapor power cycle. So due to its use as a working substances in vapor power cycle, the uh, cycle is often referred as a steam power plant, steam power cycle. Okay, so cycle is often referred as a steam power cycle. So hence so the vapor is generated in the boiler, which in which enters into a turbine, condenser, and feed pump. Okay, and what is the main function of vapor power cycle? It is to convert fuel energy into a mechanical energy, then into a electrical energy. So here, uh, uh, yeah, these are the main components of vapor power cycle. One is a compressor or it may be a pump, okay. Usually it, it is a pump only, then it is a boiler, then turbine and then cond condenser. So boiler, boiler is, is to generate a steam, okay. This is the heat input, means it is isothermal, uh, uh, you know, isothermal process, it is heat input in taking place here. And then turbine, turbine is a, a isentropic expansion process, okay. Isentropic expansion process means the, there will be a, uh, there will be a work out, out of the system, work out means a chemical energy into you know, a fuel energy is converted into mechanical energy in the turbine. Next condenser, condenser is it is rejected to atmosphere, okay. So that it taking place at constant pressure and we call it as isothermal, uh, isothermal compression, okay. We call it as a isothermal compression, this is this process, okay. And here changes the phase from uh, vapor to liquid. Next compressor. So compressor we call it as isentropic compression, okay. We call it as a isentropic compression or reversible adiabatic compression. So where it pressure is little bit pressure is increases, then that pressure that liquid will be enters into a boiler. Uh, so that cycle will be repeats. So one to two is isentropic ex compression. Two to three is what uh, two to three is isothermal expansion. Three to four is isentropic expansion. Four to one is isothermal compression. So this is a TS diagram and this is a PV diagram of vapor cycle. So here the, you can optimize the vapor power plant. So vapor power plant first you are going to use Carnot cycle to study the vapor power plant. So after the vapor Carnot cycle you are going to optimize the thing. So yeah, whatever the overcome practical limitations and design limitations if you overcome all these practical and lim uh, practical limitations and design limitations so accordingly we'll generate the idealized rank and cycle that we'll discuss in the next okay then after that again there will be a there will be a there will be a limitations in rank and cycle that will be overcome with the help of superheating cycle reheating cycle and regeneration cycle okay so all this discuss with the next one by one so carnot cycle so carnot cycle the uh, as uh, uh, we have studied the uh, last slides, it's the same you know, same block diagram we use for Carnot cycle. See in the Carnot cycle, what is a, uh, what is the drawback of Carnot cycle? And here the Carnot cycle will be having a one, you know, uh, first one to two, one to two is a, a pump, then two to three is a, a boiler, then three to four is a uh, turbine, four to one is a uh, condenser, okay. So where you will get the maximum temperature in the cycle, maximum temperature limitations in the cycle and what is the maximum temperature? So you can observe first, you know, in the turbine. Turbine usually is isentropic expansion process, where the quality of steam. What is the quality? That is the main important. So what is the quality of the steam? Because and what is the moisture content will affect the operation of the turbine? These are the problems are associated with the vapor power plant using a Carnot cycle. Okay. Next, isentropic compression process means one to two in the pump. The pump cannot work with a two phase flow. It is working only single phase flow. So that is another uh, draw, you know, another problem associated in the Carnot cycle. Next, later, then two problems are can be resolved by using uh, cycle B from the uh, previous slides. Okay, however, cycle B requires the compression one to two of a liquid very at very high pressure. Okay, it may be a twenty two megapascal of the steam. Okay, so where do we get this number? Okay, so that is uh, another uh, uh, another uh, pra uh, practical limitation. Okay. And also maintain a constant pressure above the critical means you have to maintain a constant pressure in the boiler and as well as okay so this is a, a modified Carnot cycle so modified Carnot cycle means it's called as a Rankine cycle okay so yeah Rankine cycle 
see uh, and one more thing uh, uh, the con in the in a in the carnot cycle the limitation of the carnot cycle is you can observe the point uh, point 1 here okay and in previous cycle the point 1 is in uh, you know it, it is in well well within the saturation curve okay so what is a point 1 point 1 is output of the condenser output of the condenser much and should it sh should be a fuel okay so the point 1 should be on saturation curve okay so uh, you know see here to avoid the transporting and comp compressing a two phase fluid yeah see uh, in the previous cycle as we seen in a corner cycle the point one is comprised of water vapor and as well as a fluid so the pump cannot work with a two phase flow so to overcome it so uh, the point one should be a fluid so that is what we are we can try the condense condense all a fluid existing from the turbine into a saturated liquid before compressed into a pump means before entering into a pump all condensed or should be a fluid so that is what we are overcoming in the rankine cycle okay same 1 to 2 is a pump 2 to 3 is a boiler 3 to 4 is a turbine and 4 to 1 is a condenser 1 to 2 uh, iso isentropic compression 2 to 3 uh, isothermal expansion 3 to 4 isotropic expansion 4 to 1 isothermal compression in 2 to 3 there is a steam generation will take place and 3 to 4 there is a expansion of steam and 4 to 1 is a heat reduction okay and changes a phase from vapor to liquid then 1 to 2 is a compression means compression will be taking place okay so this is what your ranking cycle okay so this is what the represent see 2 to 3 is a super heated pressure will be coming out of the boiler okay next 3 to 4 next 4 to 1 and 2 to 1 see if the point if you can observe a red line here so red line point will be on saturation curve if it is a red line if you consider red line this is called as a simple rankine cycle if you consider a uh, you know a three point number three this is called as a actual rankine cycle okay so if always in the out of the out, output of the boiler will be a superheated steam so that's why the three will be a superheated state means superheated means above the 100 degree celsius okay so this this is well you know on the saturation means it is a 100 degree celsius within 100 degree celsius so when saturated vapor enters the turbine as temperature yeah this is a saturated vapor actually this is a superheated vapor and this is a saturated vapor okay if the saturated vapor enters into a turbine temperature and pressure decreases okay condensation occur leading to a liquid okay so this liquid droplet can significantly damage the turbine blades because because this fluid is temperature and pressure is very less if it is coming downward the point number four you can observe this point number four the quality of the steam is reduces okay if the quality of the steam is reduces there will be a more moisture content in that so if more moisture content there will be damages for the turbine blades okay so one possible situation what the outcome is you have to use a superheating vapor that is a one possible and it can if you're using a superheating vapor it can also increase the thermal efficiency okay yeah you can see here uh, yeah uh, we are derived the thermal efficiency with steady flow process and there is no generation heat generation neglecting kinetic energy and potential energy for all the devices okay so from first law we can say that net transfer in minus net work output is equal to uh, sorry net heat transfer in minus net torque output plus net energy of the flow is equal to zero okay net heat transfer heat transfer is what in boiler and uh, compressor sorry condenser so q in minus q out and network output network output in heat in uh, turbine and heat in uh, pump uh, net work output means it's a turbine work input is a compressor and then net energy means enthalpy in and enthalpy out okay so we'll take one to two pump one to two pump is q is equal to zero so we call it as a h2 minus h1 and we have another formula v into p2 minus p1 so this v should be a vf okay volume specific volume the fluid at the condenser pressure okay next boiler boiler means there is no work okay so q in is equal to h3 minus h2 then turbine again q is equal to zero so h3 minus h4 condenser work done is zero then q out is equal to h4 minus h1 what is the thermal efficiency key net work out net work output divided network input what network uh, network divided by q win so 1 minus q out by q in r we can say net work is equal to work output minus work in r turbine work minus pump work okay yeah this is the thermal efficiency see net work done divided by heat supplied network done is what q in minus q out r w in minus 
W uh, W turbine minus W pump. Okay, so that we have seen here uh, before that. So turbine output minus pump in divided by Q in. If pumps are neglected, we will get the equation like H3 minus H4 by H3 minus H2. Okay, so this is the thermal efficiency of Rankine cycle. So uh, what is the work ratio? So work ratio is net work divided by turbine work. Okay, so that is uh, uh, tur net work means turbine work minus pump work divided by turbine work. Okay, the steam flow rate. So usually mass flow rate divided by network output. This mass should be in a kg per hour. Okay, please be careful. The mass should be a kg per hour. So next heat flow rate. Heat flow rate means again uh, three. You know uh, heat flow rate means it is a uh, mass flow rate divided by efficiency. Okay, steam flow rate means mass flow rate divided by network output. Heat flow rate means mass flow rate divided by efficiency. Okay, that is what you are given in the equation. So next, how uh, you can going to enhance the thermal efficiency? There are three things. One is a uh, reducing a condenser pressure. So see the first figure. It is going to reduce a condensing pressure. Means if you reduce the condenser pressure, uh, heat input is more. Okay. So and then work you know turbine work is also more. If turbine work is more, okay, and quality of the steam is uh, you know reduces. So the uh, quality of the steam is reduces so that the thermal efficiency is increases. Means turbine work is increases. So turbine if turbine work is increases automatically your efficiency will be improved. Okay. So next superheating. Superheating means you are inputting the higher temperature. If you increase the higher temperature, so that efficiency will be increases means heat you know work turbine work will be increases okay turbine work will be increases so that's how you are going to increasing the efficiency so similarly increasing boiler pressure see if you increase the boiler pressure you can observe output means reduction you know heat or rejection will be less if heat rejection will be less so automatically you are going to reducing the quality of the steam means you are going to red a quality of the steam so hence you are going to increasing the uh, higher temperature at the inlet of the turbine so that you're going to increasing the efficiency. Heat loss and then mainly thing is frictional loss. Okay, so frictional loss. What is the important is frictional loss? See, frictional loss can cause the pressure drop in a boiler and condenser and piping, piping in between the various component. If the steam leaves the boiler at somewhat low pressure, then turbine inlet will be low pressure because you know turbine exit will be uh, turbine inlet will be low pressure because boiler exit is low pressure again there is a pressure dropping in the connecting parts okay again there is a pressure drop in the condenser is a very small so uh, you know the that is how we are going to reducing the efficiency of the cycle so, what is the irreversibility irreversibility means they are going to uh, heat loss heat loss from the surrounding will be more if heat loss from the surrounding will be more so they are going to reduce the efficiency of the cycle so this is how we go to represent here see you can observe uh, uh, 1 and 2s is a this normal cycle and 2a is a actual 4s is a normal and 4a is a actual so how are we going to see uh, this is actually defined turbine pump efficiency and turbine efficiency so turbine efficiency is you know uh, actual to a you know, isentropic if isentropic work done to a actual work done but turbine is different actual work done to a isentropic work done Okay, so we call it as H two S minus H one by H two A is actual, and this is isentropic by minus H one. H three minus H four A, H four A is actual, H four S is a isentropic. These two are equations is very important for our problem solving in uh, Rankine efficiency. So next another important thing is see in the Rankine efficiency, you are uh, supplying an you know, output of the uh, condenser is uh, will be having a less pressure, but in the pump you can't able to increase uh, high pressure and high temperature so if you are not able to supply with a if you are supplying with a low pressure and low temperature into a boiler so there will be a performance of the boiler is very less okay or you know uh, there will be a moisture content will be present so in a, in optimal way of increasing the boiler pressure without increasing a moisture content you are going to using a exit you know reheat pressure or you are going to reheat the vapor so that is called as reheating reheating cycle Okay, so in the reheating cycle, you will be having a two pressure, two turbine. One is a low high pressure turbine, other one is a low pressure turbine. See, output of the boiler it directly enters into a high pressure turbine where it is expands and reduces pressure and temperature. Meanwhile, this reduces pressure and temperature vapor is again reheated to a high pressure and pressure is increases and temperature is increases. That will be enters into a low pressure where it is expands 
okay and the convert a work you know convert a work output so then it supplies to, you know supplies to a condenser so where it happen it uh, it is rejected to atmosphere okay and changes a phase from vapor to liquid then it supplies to a pump so in the pump again uh, it, it increases a pressure and temperature a little bit then it supplies to a boiler so this is the reed cycle okay so you can see 1 to 2 is a compressed you know uh, pump 2 to 3 is a boiler 3 to 4 is a isentropic see why we are drawing isentropic if it is a isentropic work done the entropy remain constant that's why we are drawing uh, vertically downward line next 4 to 5 is a reed and 5 to 6 is a low pressure turbine so it is again isentropic pro process and 6 to 1 is a constant pressure process and isothermal expansion isothermal compression process so that's why we are going to draw in a horizontal line okay so this is the reed cycle so reheat cycle again uh, you know what is a reheat cycle it increases a boil you know it reheating alone increases a boiler pressure without increasing a moisture content that is a very important thing in a reheat rankine cycle so average pressure average temperature of vapor entering the turbine is increases then thermal efficiency will be increases multi stage is possible okay multi stage is possible but if you add a multi stage for reheat cycle the thermal efficiency is decreases okay so the super uh, because the vapor existing will be superheated vapor at high temperature so thus decrease the thermal efficiency we'll discuss in the next slide to overcome the thermal efficiency okay so uh, so this is a work done by turbine means turbine 1 turbine 2 low high pressure turbine low pressure turbine so that is h3 minus h4 plus h5 minus h6 next we'll be having a only one pump so that is h2 minus h1 and you have a separate formula Vf into P2 minus P1. P2 is a uh, boiler pressure and P1 is a condenser pressure. It must be, uh, you have to remember this. P2 is a boiler pressure and P1 is a condenser pressure. Okay, Vf is a, a volume, a very specific volume at the condenser pressure. Next, work net is a, you know, uh, turbine work minus pump work, you will get the network done. And divided by heat supply. Heat supply will be two types. One is a boiler heat supply plus reheat heat supply. Okay, so if incorporation of single reheat in a modern power plant improves the efficiency of 4 to 5 percent by increasing the average temperature. Okay, yeah, this is a regeneration. You can observe in the refrigeration 2 to 2 dash to 2 to 2 dash will be supplying a low temperature heat addition. If low temperature heat addition, there will be a thermal efficiency will be lower. So to overcome of it, we are going to use a regenerator. Means what is a regenerator? You are increasing a increasing a uh, heat addition. Okay, see two to three and three to four as a heat addition. So if you add heat addition, so there will be increase in regeneration. So are we going to add heat, heat addition in the regeneration? So regeneration process will be having two types. Uh, open feed heater and the other one is a closed feed heater. So this regeneration mainly increasing a efficiency okay of feed water heater that's it so open feed heater means you are mixing the feed water heater in the mixing chamber but close feed water there is no mixing that we'll discuss one by one see in a open feed water you can observe oh, the by there will be a steam coming out of the boiler will be supplied to a turbine in a part of the steam means y kg of the steam will be expelled to a open feed water heater rest of it ex, you know rest of the steam is enters into a condenser so that is 1 minus y kg of the steam is enters into a condenser so in a feed water heater you know there will be a start heating the you know start heating the steam okay and then rest of the steam will be enters into a condenser where it is expands so then it supply back to a pump in the again in the feed water heater the pump uh, will be having a liquid will be supplied to a open feed water heater and is mixing together then with the help of pump to again will be supplied back to a boiler where here the heat is increases so that the boiler you know uh, overall cycle efficiency is increases so you can represent here see 1 to 2 is a first pump then 2 to 3 is a open feed water in the open feed water heater you're going to our you know heat you're going to hard heat that is a 2 to 3 next next and 3 to 4 you can observe a 3 to 4 is a second pump okay then 4 to 5 is a boiler again there will be a heat addition so there is a separate heat addition in the reopen feed heater so that's how you're going to increasing the efficiency next 5 to 6 is a, a first you know ykg of steam is expelled to a open feed heater through the turbine that is one and 6 to 7 is a 1 minus ykg is expands in the turbine then it is enters into a 
by you know condenser that is how 1 minus y kg and here you get 5 kg this is the ts diagram and black diagram of uh, open feed eater we have to find out the uh, uh, we have you know we have to find out the y especially y so this is very very important so uh, this is actually a mass of the uh, ma uh, mass of the steam is expelled to a open heater and other one is expelled to a compared con you know condenser so this is the thermal efficiency of the uh, regeneration cycle so is a closed feed heater see as i already told in the closed feed heater there is no mixing of uh, steam and water see expelled to a feed water heater expelled to a feed water heater so again so from the feed water heater it is directly enters into a mixing chamber okay and before that there is a you know the from the feed water heater it you know from the turbine again some some fluid will be enters into a condenser where it get condensed so again through the pump it directly enters into a mixing chamber so here is also mixing liquid and here is also coming out is also liquid so this mixing chamber and then will mix in the boiler will be supplied back to a turbine this is how we going to increase the thermal efficiency in the closed feed heater these two are and open feed heater is very very important for vto examination so uh, this is a regenerative with a two feed heater uh, that is what your uh, you know close for uh, you know close feed heater so turbine and pump so you'll get the thermal efficiency see uh, 1 into h7 minus h8 if you go into hot two feed heater okay see you have a one feed water heater one is input mkg from this side you're going to add one minus mkg so mm get cancelled you'll get only one kg of one kg of steam so one minus m1 then 1 minus m1 minus m2 if you have a two feed water heater okay similarly pump and then similarly get get the efficiency so we'll find out the uh, you know similarly two feed water in close feed heater okay so that is for open feed heater and this is for close feed heater okay so next you know how to calculate the mass see uh, there i have consider a y okay y is a you know a mass y kg of mass and y 1 minus y kg of mass how to find out m1 m2 in open feed heater by applying law of conservation of energy see uh, yeah for high pressure heater you will be having a see uh, last slide i have shown one uh, you know uh, diagram that is uh, input input and output so similarly one m1 h8 is input 1 minus m1 and h4 is the input to a high pressure heater is equal to 1 into h5 is a output so this is for only single feed heater if it is a double feed heater you have to find out m2 okay so that is for low pressure heater you will be having high pressure heater and low pressure heater see these two are m2 h9 plus 1 minus m1 minus m2 and h2 these two are input 1 minus m1 into h3 are output so if you find you know simplify this you will get m2 is equal to h3 minus h2 h9 minus h2 okay so this is for if you are using a two feed water heater if you are using a single feed water heater and this is the a formula to find out mass okay this is for open feed eater similarly for closed feed eater okay so closed feed eater again high pressure turbine m1 into h8 plus h uh, is e h is h4 h4 uh, is equal to h5 minus h5 plus m1 into h4 this is a uh, it output and this is the input if you solve you will get m1 h5 minus h3 by h8 minus h4 so this is the thing okay and similarly for low pressure eater okay so this is the uh, you know vapor power cycle uh, vapor power cycle as uh, related to only vtu okay so here uh, you know a very important thing is uh, you have to uh, understand uh, how the rankine cycle work and what is the disadvantage of rankine cycle then how to overcome the disadvantage with the help of reed cycle then how to overcome with disadvantage with the help of regeneration cycle okay thank you